some of my photographs are literally from a few weeks ago. And I know a lot of galleries would want, you know, three, six months or a year, you know, to be begin planning exhibitions. And so what we're trying to do here is actually very, you know, up-to-date social commentary. So it's a challenge. So I understand why we're here. Um, my hope is that the word will get out to a wider audience. So, so hopefully when it does happen and... Uh a chance will arise to exhibit your works to the wider audience. You will bring up your friends as well as as people yeah, who so don't support course, Ukraine yet. I mean, I, you know, uh, there have been some opportunities in Oxford where I live, um, some previous exhibitions in London, and some things in Kiev. So yes, you know, I would always be glad. I think the question of how you tap into kind of more mainstream media channels or you know, a broader platform is, is, is an ongoing, in a sense, media PR challenge. Um, but I think every step helps. So I think this, um, you know, even to galvanize the, you know, the already kind of aware and committed community is quite important. I think for, and, and I think it's helpful for people to realize they're not alone in in their concern and their, and their frustration about what's happening. So. so I know being a photographer yourself, um, it's, it's probably a bit conflicting talking about other people's work, but how do you feel when you look at these other pictures, at the photographs, and maybe some pictures of young kids, which they draw themselves? Um, I mean, I find it very... Uh, helpful, informative to, to, to view the works of other photographers. I think it, it only um, adds to you know, my own understanding of my craft and you know, to appreciate the, the perspective and the opportunities and the view that people have. Um, I mean, some of my work as well has been with children and young people. Um, and so it's difficult. I know firsthand the, the emotion. I mean, um, it's not the image here on the other side, uh, you know, a, grand, a grandfather who was telling the story of his two-year-old grandchild who was killed. And, um, you know, so I have photographs of him, of her sister who survived, and hearing the stories, um, you know, not only was she killed in, in tragic circumstances in the war, but after she was buried in the cemetery a few days later, there was another rocket attack and the cemetery was destroyed. So it's like this, this, this you know, the, the emotions almost become overwhelming. It's hard to comprehend them. Um, but I think in a way that process of, of listening to someone tell their story um, is quite, you know, can be therapeutic. It can, can be part of a slow process of healing. Um, you know, I've done some work with soldiers, not too much. And I think, um, you know, so I'm particularly interested when I see, you know, for example, the work at the airports. Um, you know, that's a, that's a particular genre that which is, you know, a very, um, you know, very challenging, I think, to be right there in the moment of conflict. Um, my, my work, you know, work with, particularly with refugees, is more almost capturing the story that happens in the quiet moments, almost between the lines of conflict and I think for many people that's you know that's a story that lingers because you know I mean I met with this family here uh, I took this photograph this May but I had met them for the first time last July so for almost a year they've been living in temporary accommodation and I think for many people this is this really is the challenge. It's the challenge of what is life like now? Because this, you know, temporary is extending now. And, you know, if you have children, you're thinking about school, you're thinking about jobs. And I think for a lot of people, there's a real paralysis around, you know, the decisions to make. You know, how, how do we move on? Should we move on? You know, I've left a home behind. I left work behind. Uh, and for me, this is the, the next set of challenges, you know, for, for a lot of, you know, both for volunteers and for the people directly suffering. Almost how do you help people to, to transition to the next stage of life? 
because you know the idea of being in a shared accommodation they, they are sharing a room with four other families behind curtains for 11 months okay I mean they're grateful they're not on the streets but that is not a sustainable situation but then yeah so and just a last question about the name fragile independence do you think this exhibition covers fragile independence, the concept of it, the beauty of the culture and the devastation of the war? Um, I, I think it's a very good start. I think, it, it, it's, I think it's helpful that it's a diversity of images around um, civilian suffering, war images, um, wider cultural imagery. Um, I mean, as I shared in my, in my remarks, I think the, the very name Fragile Independence is quite an, an intriguing one. And I think in some ways the elements of a Fragile Independence are very hard to communicate through imagery, things around um, you know, the building blocks of civil society, because I think that, that's what's happening in Ukraine right now. That's what's being built. It's actually a much more socially aware democracy and the volunteer spirit. So I think possibly it would have been helpful to have maybe a little bit more of the volunteer spirit, the story of how the community is responding to what's happening in Ukraine. But certainly as a starting point, I think what's represented here is very, very good. Mm -hmm.